Hello everybody, welcome to CK2 Plus, a full conversion mod for Crusader Kings 2. Today we will be playing in the Viking Age, and I'll just use a custom setup to show you what's up with this mod. It actually adds the Carolingian Empire, which is an empire on top of all those Carling kingdoms. You know, all of them. You get the idea. Uh, and it basically unites a bit of Christendom here. It also adds the Norse is actually being Norse as opposed to Germanic. A whole bunch of details. Uh, as you notice, this Chalcedonianism uh, were before the Great Schism, so there wasn't Catholicism and Eastern Orthodox. There was one religion. It was Christianity, Chalcedonianism. Well, of this branch as opposed to the Apostolates and the Coptics and the Iconoclasts over in the East. Main European religion was Chalcedonianism. So, we're going to be playing as, uh, not a Chalcedonian, uh, we'll be playing as Haftan Vishit, or Heisvik, however you wish to pronounce it, or Haftan Whiteshirt, as you would know him. Uh, yes, he's a popular guy to do a Let's Play of, because you get a massive heathen horde. These are my settings, as you'll notice down here, CKT Plus adds a whole bunch of goodness to the game, uh, no your empires, uh, instead of making an empire and immediately having the claim to where it is, you have to go fight for it. Um, it deunifies Germans and Italians into different cultural groups, such that basically uh, they don't unify as quickly, which is more historically accurate. Um, I'm not having a multiplayer compatibility, because it's just me. Uh, no, no rapid conquest. It adds your silliness. I'm keeping this game pretty vanilla. Let's begin. In future playthroughs, I might go for something very, very different. Of course, we get the invalid checksum. These things happen. I am a Norse feudal Germanic. Or Norse. Norse. There we go. Uh, as you'll notice, uh, Halfdan Research is kind of amazing. Skilled tactician, a known Viking already. A uh, skilled fighter, hunter. He's ambitious, he's rough, and he's cruel. Uh, he's pretty amazing at combat, has 25 marshals to start with before I even picked the focus for combat, like of course I was going to, uh, and he has several sons, sorry, three sons and a daughter. First one's kind of meh, second one is a guy I can go for, and the third one is also meh, so I'm going to make him the heir, because I can do that. Go to here, we are Norse, we're all good Norse, vote on their leader. I'm going to uh, not make him my seer. I'd rather not have a seer than have him my seer. Uh, Chancellor, Marshal, jeez. These guys are all pretty bad. I'll keep him on, because he's actually not that bad. I'll keep him just because he's a vassal. Do I really not have a better steer? I'll make it seer for the week. Not important vassals to really matter all that much. Uh, keep it that way, and uh, I'm just going to resign him as my seer, because quite frankly, a seer at the score of one is not a seer. Right off the bat, I will need a court physician, because you need one. Uh, with the mod and various other things, getting wrecked by illness is common. So I'm going to marry this uh, young cute girl, because she's attracted and 17. Actually, no, I'm not going to marry her as half Dan. I'm going to marry her off to the Chosen Son uh, to get that trait in the family line. Now, as for half Dan, that's a decent alliance, and she's young enough to have kids. He's getting a little bit old, which means you have to kind of rush this conquest. Uh, for those of you not quite as in the know on this one, excuse me while I try to get the right amount of men in the middle. Oh, come on. There we go. Excellent. More men in the middle with a good commander. Okay. Let me switch the sides. Bit of fiddling. Some of you may know, uh, there's a very large heathen horde with half and vice shirts. You will start in Jorvik, and you're already at war with Northumbria, Mercia, and Wessex. Basically trying to co conquer it. Uh, Northumbria, uh, and fighting off the rest of Christian England while you're at it. Uh, what I like to do first for playing is this, is sort of march on Mercia to knock them out early, because Wessex will take some time to get up here, and Northumbria is already pretty weak. 
excellence been married with that ambition now let's go try to fish for good wines with my daughter Evor is actually not that bad of a choice Alflum hey, those are kind of terrible choices he had to deal there uh, I'm not just line managing right now making sure that enough people get married off uh, John's Vikings um, based in Kiev they are a larger force that will try to uh, spread north them uh, in the east and take over these traditionally Slavic places it's very entertaining I'm going to take the prestige because I already am sitting on a boatload of money now, as some of you may know from the show Vikings, uh, <laughs> Halfdan is the brother of Ivar the Boneless, and uh, Bjorn Ironside, and Ubi Ragnarsson, and King Snoot is taken in the eye, all sons of the somewhat mytholo mythological Ragnar Lodbrok. Uh, this is... The show is not quite like reality. Um, Ivar the Boneless may or may not have been a cripple, we have no idea. But they borrow a lot of very historical characters who we do know exist and largely are like how they are. So let's just continue this rampage through England. Scouts inform you that the most skilled physician residing in a nearby village, even though he lacks any formal training, is supposedly a raging alcoholic, and the villagers swear that he has been able to cure any ailment afflicting them. This buffer could easily be persuaded to come take up residence at your court. Frankly, he's a learning of 19, even though he's a raging drunk. I'll take him. That's about right for a doctor in this time period. Alrighty. Let's see if I can't make him my seer as well. Or I can make my wife my seer. Uh, he's a bit better, and we will actually ha be having to convert things eventually, because most of this place is Christian. I am not. Alright, let's take Mercia, although he's with Warwick, in Warwick with his men, sorry, with Warwick in his men, that'd be wrong. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll march up there and deal with them in a moment, as he gathers up enough men to actually work for time. Sacrifice Stoden, another thing the mod adds, you will actually, when taking a province, uh, have to try to control your men, or not. Ah, battle. Glorious. I'm charged because I am awesome. And he ran away, because he's not awesome. And he knows it. Charge again. And he runs away, because he's very, very not awesome. He's a pathetic duelist. Alright, we've utterly crippled the Mercian forces, and because our problem isn't actually with Mercia and Mercia, we're going uh, north to go deal with Northumbria. Two thousand men are coming at Jorvik. That's a bit of a problem. I'll go deal with them. Already. So another thing that can occur is Christians can choose to send bishops to pagans, like us. Uh, and of course, Mercy is trying to convert us because they don't really want a screaming Norseman on their little island. Uh, I, however, will not tolerate his kind here. Gain prestige and imprison this dude, making him wonderful blot bait. I would just run on down and slaughter these guys. Yeah, I have 17,000 men. They're, they're 1,700 men, sorry. Oh yeah, 1,000. 17,000 men. Yeah, they're all doomed. Uh, this is one of those ones where you get a lot of event spawn troops and you try to make them last as long as possible. Because uh, it makes you a little bit OP. Gain a little bit of health, but gain glutton. Lose a little bit of health potential and gain temper. I'll take the stewardship. Not dead, good. And Bella checks on me. And these things happen. Let's continue. Now, this is one of those wars where you want to take as much land as possible. Ah, they found the Vrengian Guard. Excellent. Now, Norsemen will sort of flock to them. If they are excitable enough to want to join a 
I'll set my ground fleet next to Jorvik. Oh, didn't set my region. That's a terrible idea. Him. And let's continue. Uh, of course, we're offering sacrifices to Odin. I love getting that faith boost. That piety. And as you can tell, yes, we spread an eagle. It's awesome. Yep, they already took out a bit. That annoys me, but it's doable. It's in Scotland, too, so now it means that the Scots won't try to go to Germany as heavily. Ah, my Marshal Absurd of Richmond told me of a remarkable re weaponsmith residing in Lincoln. Fine idea. I could definitely use some awesome weapons. So we have this weaponsmith. Excuse me as I steal him as a steward. Because <laughs> he's good. Um, yeah, this this is definitely you. You can never go wrong with a good sword. Bunch of martial. More good combat skill. Monthly prestige. Also, Lance, this guy, no. Axes is a good idea, but light troops, I don't want those. I want heavy. Good sword. Ah, I can either choose to spend 400 of my 412 gold to get an amazing sword, a little bit less, significantly less, to get something not too bad. Plus one personal combat. I'd actually like the plus two personal combat, because it puts me at 10, which means you're pretty much amazing. It means my son would be at 11. Yeah, uh, we're, we're investing our money in being ridiculously good at killing people, as all good kings should be. And I have a grandson who is perceptive. This is where idiosyncrasy comes in. It's the submod I'm using that adds more traits. Like this. You're not quite as good as quick, but you are more focused. As you can tell, it's plus two intrigue, plus one stewardship, plus one learning, plus one personal combat skill. It's like a less good, objectively, um, version of quick. It's a good trait to have. Ulfar sounds like a fine name for a son that will not touch a throne. At least not the throne of Jorvik. Of course I'm going to inf inform my men of this Odin. I get 50 gold, 50 prestige, the trait zealous, uh, which means I can't convert if people come for me in the Holy War, but it means I get more martial, more church opinion, and frankly I'm not too worried about being Holy war against just yet. Also, I could totally see that occurring. Oh yeah, that old man? Clearly Odin. Praise the old father. As l I said, this is a land grab. I'm trying to siege out as many castles as possible to get rid of those pesky, pesky Christians. And I can either just quick assault this, or save a little bit of men, and wait. Ah, my son Siegfried has actually improved. That's pretty good. 19... Oof, that's pretty good for not being martial focused. And my son... Grandson... Well, son has had a grandson, and he's already named him Half Dan, so I don't even have to edit anything. <laughs> he's become tolerant, which is another thing added by idiosyncrasy, which does, as you can read, national revolt risk is reduced, monthly piety increased, diplomacy is increased, and this lame trait of plenty plus 20. Basically, it means that you're less likely to get religious wars from your populace, which can happen, which is good, because his father was tolerant and he's inherited that. I'd also rather he also inherit the expansionist, but, you know, you might have. Some traits are hidden. So with that, I'm going to immediately tell him to focus on struggle, because we're that kind of a yardum. Ubi's host has run off with a claim. Uh, well, we lost a commander. See, brother, may you carve a large swarth in wherever the hell you're aimed. And Ulfar's already dead. That's annoying. Or 
almost hit enough war score. And let's go beat these guys. That will do it. Spitfire Hired unfortunately died before finishing my order. Damn it. Ah. I got some money back. But no amazing sword. That annoys me. I hate it when that happens. Alright, we've stolen all of this wonderful, wonderful land in Northumbria. Give me the tick. Yep, there we go. And now I'm going to start making vassals. Because this adds more Norsemen beneath me, and I don't have to deal with any pesky Christians in the uh, holding land. Because they will not like me. Give this a moment. There's quite a lot of this clicking. And I also have too much demence. I'll put him on, and he'll be fine. And now I would like to start converting people because, frankly, it's time to spread some Norsedom. I'll put in Dumhold, so that it gives us a swarth in the middle. And make it about 50 50, which will be pretty good. Hopefully, he'll do alright. He has a very high learning, so he should be fine. I can also create the Jarl of Northumbria if I wish to. However, with the kind of secession I have, gravel kind, uh, it would kind of split up my realm, and I don't really want to do that just yet. I fought long and hard at making sure that the realm was larger. I still have 3,000 events on troops. We're doing okay. I'm going to put Siegfried in charge and tell him to resign. That way my heir and I are both off, such that having kids is a little easier. Ragnar wants to have land in states, which is basically I give them a pile of gold and they get wealth and prestige over time. It's a good way of buying off distant relatives and people of some importance, but not quite people you want to give land to. Uh, Ragnar fits that description pretty well. He's not that great of a marshal, he's not that great of a steward. Getting land to him would kind of stink. It wouldn't get developed well. However, Gulfriev here is an amazing marshal. I could do to buy him off, stick him at a border, and with the the traits that he has, he's very likely to go off and acquire more land for me without me having to do it. Siegfried is also another intriguing option. I think I'm going to land Siegfried first. He's also expansionist and pretty damn good, uh, but not my heir. This way I know that my one son really is, has already been given his inheritance and he won't go and uh, get random divvied up bits of Jorvik. I'm going to give him uh, Northumberland? Something up there. Let's give him Cumberland. We'll give somebody else Northumberland. This just keeps them away from Jorvik. And hopefully on a border. This is admittedly a border with someone I'd almost consider an ally. In fact, he is an ally now. Uh, but we're Norse. He's probably going to go attack these guys or some Irish or the Welsh. Who knows? He's going to go off and do his own thing. Um, this one I'll also land. Uh, but I had to give him, mm, no, we're not doing that. And he's too bad to land. Let's see, do I have any commanders I like? Sophie. Nope, not really. Never mind. On with the marching. Ah, we're one man short for hunting. That's terrible. Fight my marshal. Alright, excellent. We're now an ally with Ivar the Boneless. I'm going to go join his war for the prepared invasion of England, which will put somebody up into East Anglia, which is about what we want. It puts more Norsemen on my island. Good hunt. Excellent. Now let's get them all together. And he's already mostly won his war anyway, which is impressive. This guy's just gotten better. Actually, I could give Skadbur here a bit of land. Let's do it. I'll give him Northumberland. Actually, no, let's give him Westmoreland. Right ahead. There you go. Make him commander again. Boom. And that way, I don't have to deal with having too much defense. Which, as you know, is a bit of a problem. I'm going to march them on just straight on down to Wessex. 
because I would rather just fight the pickable battle than sit here and wait for sieges. More prestige. Ah, uh, war is already over. Oh well. We're marching back up again. As you can tell, I have a very large amount of men very early, and that's why playing this guy is fun. Um, I'm going to go mess with Mercia now. Or probably Lincoln. Ah, uh, he can call in the Austrians. So that gives him a bit more men. I'm just going to make sure they don't have like a murder blob. Eh, only 5,000. That's not a murder blob. Here we go. I'll go for Lincoln, which is rightfully mine. Anyway, I'll call in Ivar for another 4,000 men and raise my ungodly horse. I think if we come up to something like 10,000, it's it's a bad time. I don't know. He's become my rival. I know. He's become a rival of Matst. Oh, because Matst is a powerful enough dude and wants to spawn the council. And he's better at doing it. There you go, Matst. And back over here, and let's make that other dude. Yep, there we go. A little under 10,000 men descend upon Lincoln. Okay, a little more than 10,000 men to send upon Lincoln. Jeez. We'll take this pretty quickly. Or we'll go do the Mercians. My daughter marry a Christian? No. Uh, my, my daughter would be... Uh, marrying a good Norseman. You are the bonus of son, or I can go over to Snake in the Eye. Either way, it's one of her cousins. I'm gonna go with, uh, or I can go with the Duke of Holland. Uh, he's under other people, that's not as good. I'd rather have uh, Boneless's kid here because he's a bit older and he'll have more kids, which I don't really care about, but it cements this alliance a bit better. He'll like me more and be a little more willing to join. Have you for commander? Certainly. I think he already was beforehand. Toden. And Toden. <laughs> Excellent. Somebody just got murdered. Oh well. Of course it's the seer. Luckily we have another guy at 19. And I can probably make him my physician as well. Yes I can. Boom. Excellent. And away we go. I'll deal with that little landing in a moment. They'll probably run away because I have so many more men than they do. And nope, they just got slaughtered. Let's head back on down to Lincoln. Because why not? Just mine some more war score. Ah, dude. Guys just keep on dying. My son is dead. He got you. That's just terrible. He wasn't even worth being killed by. <laughs> That's why we didn't make him heir. Excellent. I have a couple of Reeves and some minor people in my jail. Good for blots. I'll be doing one of those in a moment, probably to end up this episode. And yeah, I will keep doing more of this because it is fun to do. After all, it's the Heathen Horde. Oh, excellent. I've now become a brilliant strategist instead of a skilled tactician for all this good warring. So now we have 31 Marshall. Meaning that we are ostensibly amazing. He has 9, I have 9. This is going to be a close one. Frankly, I'm willing to go for it knowing that I have a good son already uh, after me. And he doesn't. His heir is his brother, who's already blind. Quite frankly, isn't all that great. So I'll do more damage to him than he'll do to me. However, it would kill off half dead white shirt early. Eh, these things happen. I'll just take this all we can get. Defend myself. Oh no. No, I'm not finished. If we die in battle, we're just a good Norse. If he dies in battle, well, he got killed by the Norse. 
Uh, I'm wounded. That's not good. Uh, yep. I'm getting killed. No. We're not finished. And it's just more and more of this. Strike. And we kill him. Excellent. Very good. That breaks that bit of alliance they just made. Probably. And throws it over to this guy, who is a much worse king, who is also blinded and has cancer, meaning that this little girl will probably become the queen of the Asuras. Obsessively, I just threw the Christian kingdom into chaos with the stroke of a sword. And yeah, I took a wound. But that's being Norse for you. Now's your chance. As we decimate his army. And this war should be over pretty shortly. Place commander. So my son died, and here we go. Ah, died of my wounds. Well, he's in Valhalla. <laughs> yep. Feast in Valhalla, he died of an infected wound. Although we're not excessively blessed, we hope that Halfdown finds peace in the afterlife. And as I'm sure he will, drinking in the halls. Uh, now I have to go placate my brother and things and reset a council, and it will be quite entertaining to do so. You're a powerful vassal. Abjur needs to do that. I trust you. I need some of your beasts here. You. You. Why are you... Because you're bad at everything. Well, there's one thing to do that. I'll make you my counselor, which you're totally terrible at, but I'm not really using the counselor for much, so... Enjoy. problem is, now I only control Yorvik itself. All these bits went off to my half-brother here, which is not good. Who is my heir at the moment? Instead of my son, because he didn't get appointed or elected, as I should say. My son appears to be ill. Let's hope the Chronicle uh, Chaplain is making him that guy. And you're over here for court position. Also that guy doesn't need region. So let's go for my wife. There we are. That'll get her to like me a bit more. And three points of commanders. Because you just need to continuously do that in this game. They have a nasty tendency of dying. Strange. It's like it's a risky position or something. And let's just assault. And boom. 100% war score. We've acquired Lincoln. Admittedly, it cost King Halfdan his life, but we gained yet more land in England. With that, I'm willing to call this an episode as we continue our conquest of Britain. This has been Strategist Primus. I hope you enjoyed it.